Hello and welcome to Resource Review. Today we'll be evaluating three resources for primary design and technology. A set of mechanical toys with teacher reference manual. Right, what do you think is making it move? A control box with built-in memory. And I press go. And a file to support subject leaders. Find out what our panel of experts think here on Resource Review. Recommending today's resources is Professor Claire Benson, Director of the Centre for Research and Curriculum Development in Primary Technology at UCE Birmingham. Joining Claire is Ray Barker, Director of the British Educational Suppliers Association, and Adrienne Jones, a former primary school advisor, now turned resources expert. Thank you all very much for coming. Thank you. So Claire, your first resource, this amazing array of mechanical wooden toys. They do look rather like toys. <laughs> Tell us more about them as a teaching resource. Right. Well, my first resource that I picked was something that I think is really colourful, something that's going to appeal to children of all ages. It's got a whole range of mechanisms and it is different in the sense that the mechanisms have been very carefully chosen so that teachers can use this not only for play, but also for play and questioning to develop children's knowledge and understanding about mechanisms. So this is a complete set that comes with a, a teacher's guide, is that it right? It does. Well, thank you very much. Before we talk about the resource any further, let's see it in action. We gave these mechanical toys to St Edward's Roman Catholic Primary School in London, where Deputy Head Teacher Patricia Coxhead and her Year 5 budding designers put them through their paces. Our objective today then is to investigate moving toys. The resources we were using um, were basically movable toys. We had things like the um, moving penguins and the boat that bobbed up and down. Straight away the children um, got into a discussion about the toy and how it worked. It means it moves around and because this piece of wood rests on it, the booklet provided them with questions to make them really think about the design technology aspect of the toys. Why do you think the hole's off centre there? Why don't you think it's in the centre? One of the toys that we focused in on was the, the snowman, the moving snowman. Right, what do you think is making it move? And what we did with that was we looked at how it worked and then the children reproduced a prototype. Is the hat attached to the head? Oh, so Is it? What's it attached to? In order to explain things like pivots and how things are working, the children need to really look at the toys and be able to touch them and look at them properly. And if we'd have tried to do a prototype of the snowman, for example, just with a picture, it would have been difficult. Whereas the children could really look at the toys that were there, have a look how they worked. It would have been good if the toys could be taken apart because I think all the children really wanted to get a look at how the joints worked and how the pivots were working. I thought the booklet was good. Um, I thought it would have been good if it had um, had a bit more of an introduction just in terms of helping the teacher, in terms of teacher notes. I think the main thing is the children responded really well to the product. They had to investigate with, with what they had in terms of the toy, but then they had to sort of come up with the answers themselves. In terms of mixed ability, I thought that all the children got a lot out of the activity and um, really enjoyed it as well. Well, Ray, I'll come to you first. What did you think of these as a resource? I think you can't not love them, really. I mean, they're very brightly coloured and, um, and, and extremely useful with that kind of hands-on kind of approach. And what I think is the best selling point of them is that they are, they are solid and quality material. You can't do everything with them, but I think that's reflected in the price. OK. Adrienne, what are your thoughts about the wooden toys? Well, they've definitely got universal appeal and they're fun to play with. The question I had really was about the support notes. They're very plain, which is good, but I felt they missed a trick in that it would be quite nice to have some templates in there. You know, whereas the teacher in the film said it would be good to be able to take these apart. Mm. 
and actually see some of the shapes involved, some of the sizes. I think that's certainly a very fair point. However, I think it's important to remember that if we're giving templates out, it can lead to children having a template, making something out of card, and that's the whole design and make uh, unit done, rather than getting children to think about their own design and using the template for a focused practical task. OK. Well, thank you all very much. Now let's move on to Claire's second choice of resource, and it's the Learn and Go controller box with built-in memory. So, Claire, here it is. Can you demonstrate and explain it to us, please? Right. What we're actually looking at is the Learn and Go box here on the top, and that's a resource that comes with a very easy um, to use uh, booklet which explains exactly how to use it. Okay. We've pre-programmed it. I'm just going to press it twice, and the traffic lights then light up. Great. So the traffic lights are a kind of optional extra that you Absolutely, can buy yes. with it. Uh, I think it's for, partly for the programme so that we can actually see it in use. Yes. But what the children really love doing, um, and so do the teachers, is using the box with their own products that they've made. And it's so easy, you just have um, a, their own crocodile clips, they clip it onto the top and they can control whatever it is they've made. And you're a big fan of this resource? I think it's a really good resource because it takes a lot of the fear out of doing control technology and I think once teachers have used that then moving on to using computer control um, is the next logical step. Okay well thank you very much. Let's have a look at this resource in use. We went to Derrick Wood Junior School in Orpington in Kent where teacher Alison Tanner and her year five class put it through its paces. What does this do? Sophie? Um. It's a, a, a and learn box. Today we were using the Learn and Go box to control a model that the pupils had designed themselves. Their brief was simply to produce a model that used either lights or a motor or a buzzer and that could be controlled with the Learn and Go. And when I built that pattern in, I stop and I press Go and then I press Go a second time and then it will copy that pattern that I've given it and repeat it until I stop it. They were simply exploring how they could use it to make their models look a little bit more lifelike. So it was just plug it in and have a play. Aww. Wait, George, you need to pop a yellow one and a red, two yellows and two reds. Two in, two in. them to It's solid. Um, it's not going to get broken, it's very easy to attach your wires to um, and the children pick up very, very quickly on how it operates. The thing I like best about it is the simplicity. They have only to push one button and a light bulb lights up or a motor turns and that instant response allows them to really think about what they're doing and focus on, on the pattern that they want to build up from there. Right, let's move if they have a motor which is going too fast or going in the wrong direction, they can reprogram very quickly and change it immediately without having an awful lot of control problems. It does actually cover predominantly all that you need to do within the QCA scheme for control. It was a very simple way to introduce control and we haven't done an awful lot of that before and I think they've all left the classroom knowing that they can program a very simple programmable device to make their machines work. Well, Claire, that resource seemed to go down really well, particularly with the boys really getting stuck in there. But it is relatively expensive, £63 for one controller. Does that put it out of reach for many schools? There are all sorts of ways, I think, that schools find um, it in their budgets uh, <laughs> to, to be able to, to cost it in. For example, if we're thinking about bridging the gap, a number of secondary schools will actually use the device and will put it on loan to primary schools. If you think about ICT and the ICT curriculum, unless children are using something like that, they're not covering um, the ICT curriculum. So you've got like two budgets. And of course, you don't need one uh, per pair. The children can work as in a circus of activities, so maybe three uh, three and a, three for a class to start with would be perfectly adequate. Okay, thank you. Adrienne, what did you think of the Learn and Go box? 
Well, I think it's a really useful adjunct to all the work that will be done on circuits. So it's taking it that stage further and looking at building in control and for children to see the immediacy of their work in the way that we saw there on the film um, in terms of design is a great sort of shortcut and a real sense of satisfaction for pupils doing D&T. If I just reflect a bit on the price, I think um, control technology is, is notoriously badly done in schools or not done at all because we have a lot of non-specialist teachers and um, if you're thinking about what the teacher said on the, on the, on the video, you can see that um, she hadn't done much before but this enabled her to do a lot more. The word is enabled. The second, it made her life easier. Um, um, you know, it, it, it is a cross-curricular product in terms of ICT so I, I don't think £63 is very expensive for, for doing all that. Well, thank you very much. Now let's move on to Claire's third resource. And this is something a bit different, Claire, for teachers. It's the subject leader's file here for primary design and technology. So talk us through this resource. We've done uh, resources so far that have really hopefully helped teachers to work with children in the classroom and to develop knowledge and understanding. And I think it is very important that teachers have something for themselves. This uh, is a new folder just out. There had been a coordinators folder, um, but this is updated and we have the new title here, Subject Leader. It has uh, guidance in there about policy, about planning, as well as areas in terms of knowledge and understanding, and as well bringing in links with the primary strategy. So you have links to things like questioning, uh, thinking skills. Right, okay. Ray, is this something that you think should be in every school? Absolutely, yes. I mean, where else can you get that much information? Just two things which I thought were really um, interesting inside. The whole sections on um, how to make maximum use of uh, classroom assistance, for example. Now, that's a very big area at the minute. And how to work with industry, there's a section there. So all those kind of links between uh, classroom uh, design technology and technology in the outside world. And that's very difficult to find. Mm. Adrian, what were your thoughts? that it's a really comprehensive document which will help subject specialists. Mm. Well, I did want to add a little bit of salt, pepper and mustard to it though. Mm. It's very text dense and the images that are contained within it don't do much for you. Just finally Claire, what's this going to do for the average primary teacher who are trying to deliver d &T? Well, hopefully it, it's a document that they can keep coming back to. It, it's something that you can dip into. And in fact, the end sections are left empty for the teachers to, or the subject leader to add into, which I think is really important to make it their own personal document. Well, thank you all very much. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today. But just to summarise, the three resources that we looked at were a set of wooden toys and teachers reference book from TTS Group, the Learn and Go controller box with memory from Data Harvest, and the primary subject leaders file from the Design and Technology Association. For more information about any of the resources that we've looked at today, and to post your own comments about resources for primary D&T, go to our website. It's teachers.tv forward slash resource review. Or you can email us resourcereview at teachers.tv. So a big thank you to all our panellists, to Claire, to Ray, and to Adrienne. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Resource Review. Bye-bye. <laughs>